So though Lincoln Riley and Brian Kelly may be at new institutions, that hasn't stopped them from hitting the recruiting trail really hard. And thus far, both of those individuals have been really productive in the class of 2023 with getting together a class in the early portions of the recruiting cycle. But today, we need to break down the newest addition for both USC and LSU because I find there to be intriguing points with both of them. Before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I need to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, why for yes, in for no. Do you believe it's important for a head coach in their first year at a new institution to have a really productive recruiting class to set the tone? And let me know what you're thinking. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification as I do constant college football content and you don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed the content, like and comment down below as those in interactions are massive. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And we'll start with USC, who gets in a top safety in the nation in Braxton Myers. And this is a really great addition. Whenever we're talking about USC, I've said this at length. We have no questions as to when the offense will come together, whether that's the first week or whether that's midseason with Lincoln Riley with Caleb Williams there's an inevitability that that offense will come together. The question we have all asked is, what is that defense going to look like? Because you're going to need some semblance of a defense if you're going to hit the heights you would like to hit. And when you're able to recruit prospects such as Braxton Myers, that's a great way to start answering those questions early before a down of football can ever be played. Because we all understand the results still need to be shown on the field, but the best way to go and address those needs is by getting top top-tier players out of high school, and that's exactly what Braxton Myers is. Standing six foot one, 185 pounds per 24-7 sports, he comes in as a top 110 player in all of high school football, a top 10 safety, and a top 20 player in the state of Texas, which is a state absolutely loaded in talent. If you haven't seen the video, a few videos ago, I broke down how there was a disproportionate amount of talent spread amongst two states in high school football, Texas and Florida. In which case, if we look at the top 300 players in all of high school football, 107 of them come from one of those two states. 50 in the state of Texas, 57 in the state of Florida, which is incredible. But USC has been quite successful at establishing a pipeline to Texas, which shouldn't come as a surprise. When we look at some of the coaches USC were able to grab this offseason, a lot of them have really healthy relationships to the state of Texas. And when you look across college football, that's something that many of these institutions put as a major importance, having some semblance of a presence in Texas. And with Braxton Myers, this is now USC's third commitment in their class from the state of Texas. And so if you are looking to maintain those relationships, that pipeline, that's the best way to do it. But as I said in the beginning, there are two things that intrigue me about this pickup for USC. First and foremost, we've been questioning the defense. What's that going to look like? And though we have no definite answers yet, the best way to start answering those questions is by getting in top tier players. And that's exactly what Braxton Myers is. And that's really what USC has done. And then they've been quite successful in the transfer portal, but we've talked about that enough. Let's focus on recruiting now. They got Damani Jackson in last cycle, and if they can continue getting pieces like Braxton Myers, that's a defense that's going to have the talent to be able to do something. But the other area I think it's so intriguing is USC's ability to maintain a presence in the state of Texas, something that is going to be of massive importance, especially for USC in their building phases. So, Really love this pickup for the Trojans. I think they're doing great work on the recruiting trail. And because of that, if you're a college football fan, you've got to be watching right now because the Pac-12 is in a precarious place. USC, Oregon, Utah, they're about to have phenomenal battles for the Pac-12. And this is just going to only up the level of intrigue we have in what happens within the Pac-12. So we see a player from the South head West, but what about a player from the West heading South? And that's exactly what we saw LSU be able to do because as USC was able to get in a big win for their secondary in the class, class of 2023, as was LSU. LSU bringing in a top 150 player in all of high school football, a top 20 defensive back, and a top 15 player in their respective state out the state of California, Dalen Austin, who attended Long Beach Poly, who consistently churn out top level prospects in high school, and those guys go on to have successful college careers. But this is awesome for LSU. LSU has always been known for their hard-nosed defense, and Brian Kelly is trying to establish that as a remaining identity of the Tigers. And why wouldn't you? You play to your strengths. 
And one of the strengths LSU has had is their ability to recruit. And whenever Brian Kelly took this job, I really found it interesting because there was no doubt that the LSU job was one of the best jobs available in the nation, but it was also one of the most difficult jobs available in the nation. And allow me to explain. It's easily one of the best jobs in all of college football because of the talent present in your state, and there's no other major institutions you're competing with for that talent. LSU is the main show for college football in Louisiana, and that inevitably puts them at somewhat of an advantage. Now, we understand recruiting has become so national that there are going to be multiple different institutions in your state trying to get talent out of it. But for you to have any inherent advantage is something you like, and LSU does have somewhat of an advantage in their state, which is awesome to see. The other area where it's a great job is you know that the buy-in from not only the institution but from the surrounding areas is going to be at an all-time high. LSU fans love their LSU football. They're completely bought in. And if you're going to look for a new job as a head coach, that's something that you love, that buy-in, because it's going to create an environment that recruits want to be a part of. It's going to create an environment when Saturday nights come, we're talking about, oh, well, we have to go play in Death Valley. We know what that environment is like. That is an awesome draw if you're looking to become a head coach. But why is this a difficult job? If there's all these positives, what makes LSU a difficult job? Well, part of that buy-in is a double-edged sword. You have so much support, but at the other end of it, this is a fan base, this is an organization that expects success sooner rather than later. LSU has known national championship success very recently with the team that many put in the pantheon of college football, and deservedly so. That offense was phenomenal. It was so fun to watch. But whenever you're Brian Kelly and you're taking that over, you know that there are going to be some level of understanding that, okay, well, we have a year or two to really rebuild this, but you do know you're probably on a shorter leash than you should be because of the success LSU has had, not only because of the success LSU has had, but the league you play in. The SEC is a really tough league, not only because of the top tier coaches, because of the top tier talent, because of the recruiting prowess that is in the SEC, and when you look at the states that that make up the SEC, the prospects that they churn out from a high school level, but also because who you're measured against. You have Kirby Smart, you have Jimbo Fisher, and at the top, you have Nick Saban, and that's who you're inevitably going to be measured against. Because of that, it's very stressful taking a job as an SEC coach. It has its luxuries, no doubt about it, but it's also a very difficult time. So that's why I say LSU is without a doubt, unquestionably, one of the best jobs in the nation. But it's also one of the most difficult jobs in the nation. And Brian Kelly has hit the ground running, being able to put together a class, though early, that ranks within the top 15 recruiting classes in the nation. And what they've been able to do is continue recruiting the defensive back position at a high level, something that many pundits wondered whether they would be able to do. And that's why I say... These are very interesting moves. For USC, they're in a complete building phase, but they have got so much hype surrounding them right now. And never, please never underestimate the power of hype because they can take that, get in a really solid recruiting class, and if they even have an improved year next year, they can package it and say, hey, look, we knew we were about a year or two off. We just needed to show some signs of life, show some signs of improvement, and once everybody from this current class gets in here, well, now we're really ready to take off. That's going to be a real pitch utilized so long as they have a better year. And for LSU, so long as they can come out and have a pulse, they're going to utilize a similar pitch. However, we have to understand they're probably going to have a shorter leash. Not that they should, but being an inevitability of being in the SEC and being at a program that has had recent national championship success at the level they have, it's just going to be so much fun to watch all these moves in college football and how they play out. Because of that, I can't wait to hear from y'all. Hop down in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking about these two editions. That's it. See ya.